prima di, dare, di passare la parola al dottore Giordano, eh, io il, ulti, per l'ultima volta... Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce the Park of the Mediterranean Lifestyle for the last time, and I'm going to provide you with some information suitable for understanding what the park is about, also for those that might not know. This is a great initiative. The project park is substantially an economic one, or is mainly an economic one to promote um, businesses, uh, their work, uh, their income. Over the last decades, uh, Sicily has gone through a dual depopulation in the inland areas, central Sicily, that's why the project starts from here, and also metropolitan cities in the last 10 years. Uh, our island was abandoned by more than 400,000 Sicilians, at least according to the ISTAT data. And this number is about to increase because there are lots of Sicilians that have left the region to go elsewhere in Italy and abroad. We have to stop this drain. We have to stop people from going away because of necessity, not because of leisure purposes. In the Caltanissetta area, we've had several crises, the crisis of rural economy, then a crisis of the mining industry. You know, in Caltanissetta, there was a big mining center, and then came the crisis of the uh, oil, and then a crisis uh, in the building sector, and finally a crisis uh, in the industrial farming of the period following the Second World War. The park has to propose something new, a new model of development starting from central Sicily, but trying to cover the whole of the region and also the south of Italy and the rest of Italy starting from a new lifestyle with special characteristics. It's a more human, more sustainable lifestyle, more community-based, inspired by the principle, a um, healthy mind in a healthy body, eating good food and the right food. We've thought of this park with slow trails, local landscapes, Mediterranean cuisine, uh, castles, villages, um, places where you can also exhibit and display your goods and the Mediterranean uh, products, and also outdoor playing areas, and as well as libraries. It's a broad area park, including the center of Sicily, covering more than 10,000 square kilometers, involving 100, 150 municipalities and 1.5 million population. It's based on integrated partnership and on three pillars. They are like the legs of a table with the same height, the same weight. None of them is more important than the others. They have to coexist. That is private businesses, the private sector, the public sector, and the third sector. Professor Zamani was here with us on the first day. He is one of the greatest experts in um, third sector economy, and he told us which way to go. This is our large community of the Mediterranean lifestyle. We have to rely on integral ecology. We have to solve a big problem, a problem of amount of um, work and also business income. And we have to rely on something which is qualitatively good, integral ecology. On day two, we had a keynote lecture by Federico Butera, professor emeritus from the Milan Polytechnic. From the theoretical, spiritual point of view, the park relies on three main pillars. The UNESCO recognition of dieta, the Mediterranean diet, as it was called in Greek. It actually means Mediterranean lifestyle, which the 
park intends to promote as uh, intangible world asset. And then another uh, pillar is the encyclical Laudato Si by Pope Francis. And I invite you to read it because it's uh, an excellent document. And then the Terra Madre doc movement inspired by Carlo Petrini. In order to make this dream park come true, and many people call this a prophecy, a vision, we're using a lot of tools. We're trying to mobilize all competencies, involve all stakeholders in our region, and we try to put a, to form a system, an excellent system of what is currently available. Then we use many instrumental, many financial tools. We had the mayor of Campo di Pietra from Molise, which is the product uh, project leader of uh, CIS uh, Molise, uh, contributing uh, to the area with 200 million euros worth of institutional contracts um, for development. Giuseppe Notar Tommaso, the mayor, is certainly following us. Uh, so the 2027 plan, the uh, recovery and resilience plan, which everybody is aware of at the moment, apart from having a vision, a plan, and uh, partners, apart from involving uh, competencies and excellencies, we need to um, set a framework, a legal framework for this large community. The municipality of, of Caltanissetta has um, promoted a great idea, the idea of the park, uh, together with my uh, council, the one that I'm the head of, the Council for Territorial Growth. We will continue steering the project, but it's now time to uh, create a common umbrella under which the three pillars can work together. That's why we are starting a process, which should be a stepwise process from simple a simple association to a community-based foundation. It's a new institution which can help the three pillars live together with the aid of other tools if required. So we have to really have a broad view. The aim of these meetings is twofold. First, as was the case in all mornings of the event, we have focused on different aspects of the project with speakers that have provided us with lots of insights. We will assess all of them after the event is over. In the afternoon, we will, um, also this afternoon, we will consider the five uh, important dimensions of the park. First, the legal framework, which we hope we can put in place by the end of the year or January. Then on day two, we talked about the entry requirements for all those that will be part of the park organization because they will have to be consistent. And then the quality standards, which have to be ensured to the whole world that will choose us as a park of the Mediterranean lifestyle on day Three, we talked about our large community, our large Mediterranean lifestyle community. On day four, we talked about promoting uh, intangible culture and uh, top quality local products. And this morning, we discussed a lot with the universities, the technical institutes, the academies, etc. So it was a great opportunity to examine this topic. Uh, of training for the Mediterranean lifestyle. This is important from primary school children to students at university. We've, we've kept this as our last theme because it's the most important one. We have to teach 
young generations because the park project was designed for our children for the next generations. This was also the idea of the Caltaniseta municipality. This should not be an action linked to the present mandate of the uh, municipality, but uh, it should be something to meant to continue over time in order to favor the coming generations. I'd like to hand it over now to the moderator of this afternoon. Thank you, Francesco. We will um, have a chat together. It will be a fireside chat, so to say. I will uh, not uh, act as a moderator. I think that so far, all the afternoon sessions um, were linked to the Interreg Med project. So the five pillars were focused were the focus of each one of the days of the event. And in the afternoon, we established connections with the Interreg Med project. I think we should briefly mention that the project was um, born, so to say, in 2017. There was a kickoff of the project in February 2017. There are 12 partners from eight countries. Well, it would be uh, difficult to, to be eight partners and 12 countries. COPEM used to be the Sicilian partner, and then because of a financial flow issues, uh, this role was handed over to the municipality of Caltanissetta. On February the 3rd, when you were appointed, you were appointed as councillor. On the 3rd of February 2020, in Seville, the municipality of Caltanissetta proposed its um, proposed to replace COPEM and the executive committee accepted Caltanissetta. And then the world would stop because of the pandemic. So we, were, we could not be operational after the administrative startup phase after the signature in December 2020, the true operational phase started in April 2021. The role of Caltanissetta had to be somehow changed and Caltanissetta became the recipient of other experiences gained by other partners. So we've always listened to the other's experiences. Also today, we will hear about activities linked to training and education within the project and how they can be transferred. This morning, there was really a high level discussion covering the topic of formal training and education. Since the partners in the project are mainly public bodies in the various territories, training occurs in an informal way, addressing 
businesses and not-for-profit organizations, not students, in a process of so-called co-creation. First of all, I'm very pleased to show you one of the outputs of this process. When brands meet people, this is the title, the official title of the project, MDNet, as part of the Interreg Mediterranean project, because ultimately, we always talk about food, but unless you have a community, unless you have people, there can be no lifestyle, no production. It's the people, the community that have a central role to play. I'd like to ask the help desk to show us the first uh, video. Style that shows us how it's done. And it's this Mediterranean lifestyle that brings millions of tourists here each year. Our Mediterranean diet declaration endorses know exactly why that is. Here we are on the island of Far in the beautiful hey, village Chief, of Milna, where today only four Milna. generations from an Opeger, a family-run business, and we'll talk about lavorato in questa zona. Si really parla means. di stile di vita mediterraneo qui e che cosa significa veramente? Io sono Maria Tutorsore, poi sono animagno sam ingegner chemiche e tecnologie. I možda mi je ovo pomoglo u to moje znanje od prije pomoglo uh, ili me motiviralo da krenem u proizvodnju uh, uh, ovih proizvoda koje ćete sada vidjeti. Uh, počeli smo maslinovom uljem kako je dobilo zlato, bilo je logično da ga kako ne možemo ne, ne zlatna kap, nego zlatna kapija. Sljedeći proizvod kojega, na kojega sam isto jako ponosna je čatni. Čatni sa varenikom. Ima puno čatnija po svijetu. Koliko sam gledala, najpoznatiji je od manga. Ali ja nisam htjela koristiti nikakve sastojke koji, znači ni povrće, ni ništa drugo, šta nije sa otoka. Ja želim da bude sve autohtono naše sa posebnim začinima koji su karakteristični za naš otok. So other than making her delicious products, we ask her what a typical Mediterranean Sunday is. Questo cibo veramente delizioso vediamo come è una domenica tipica del Mediterraneo. Turistička sezona. Bi izgledalo da se lagano, polako, ujutro dignemo, popijemo kavu, malo popričamo između sebe, napravimo neki plan ako imamo ovaj, nešto dogovoreno s nekim ili gostima ili šta ćemo raditi popodne zajedno. Hoće li nam doći prijatelj ili, ili sin, moj sin živi u Hvaru, na ručak i tako, to je dogovor. Ruča se obično stavi već spremat, kuhat a, i onda se ide na misu. U 9.30 je misa, ko može ići, ne možemo uvijek ići svi, zato što imamo drugih obaveza i uvijek nekog drugog posla. Poslije misle se ide malo uh, u selo, u neki od kafića i onda se pomalo popije kava. <laughs> I to otprilike traje tako to. Uh, I drink coffee every day in the morning. It's uh, Bevo ritual. caffè tutti i giorni, stamattina uh, alla mattina uh, già a casa bevo un caffè con mio marito, <laughs> poi dopo durante la giornata ne, be ne beviamo altri. 
effettivamente il caffè, anche se non ha origine nel Mediterraneo, è diventato un rituale nello stile di vita del Mediterraneo. L'effetto del caffè dura solo due ore, nulla di più. Za kavu s prijateljicama idemo na u neki kafić uz more ili na splitsku rivu. May I add something? When, whenever I call her... Vorrei aggiungere una cosa. <laughs> I'm always on coffee. <laughs> Whenever. Quando? Uh, ok, I know when uh, Quando she, la chiamo. When she works. E la chiamo tante But, volte. Uh, I call her Nives, uh, Quando la chiamo, oh, le dico, now, uh, Nives, cosa stai friend? facendo? <laughs> e lei mi risponde oh, sempre, sto bevendo un caffè con I'm, uh, le amiche o con gli amici. <laughs> Oppure mi dice che sta facendo una passeggiata con il cane. Poi è ruccia. Uh, obično nas se okupi najmanje 10 za ručak, nedjeljni ručak, toliko broji članova naša obitelj uh, i mama moja je tu s nama. I ovaj, poslije ručka, onda jedva čekamo da gosti idu doma, <laughs> da se mi možemo malo odmoriti. <laughs> Jer to je sastavni dio ove života jednostavno. Ti, pogotovo ljeti dan je dug, pretopal. Moraš se malo odmoriti, malo podignit noge, malo nešto pročitat, nešto pogledat na televiziji, tako da jedno popodne. A onda kako ko? So the guests have gone and now it's time to take things a little bit easier. Se non sono andati tutti, adesso possiamo prenderci le cose, diciamo, con calma. In Dalmazia si parla molto di prendere le cose proprio con calma, lentamente. Tutti i pomeriggi, tutte le sere, a tutti i pomeriggi devono andare a fare un riposino, i bambini, perché a un certo punto devono lasciare un attimo respirare i genitori. C'è un certo tipo di un certo stile di vita qui in Dalmazia caratterizzato dal fatto che tutti se la prendono con calma, con tranquillità. Non si vuole fare le cose in maniera stressante, si vuole proprio prendere tutto con calma e tranquillità. Allora, allora eh, abbiamo visto dei paesaggi bellissimi come sono altrettanto belli quelli della nostra isola. Questo è un prodotto che nasce da un'azione di formazione non formale che i nostri partner... Within the living lab or the living labs that Ms. Dr. Trapani was referring to this morning, they are living labs involving people with a different know how and multidisciplinary knowledge. They um, form groups to co create. The Croatians have produced five videos like this one for the purpose of signing the Declaration of the Mediterranean Diet, which is one of the outputs of the um, project. These informal training actions have taken place in the 11 sites that are home to the 11 partners of Caltanissetta. We met in Pestum with our partners at the 
Mediterranean uh, stock exchange of the tourism, uh, archaeology tourism. All territorial living labs met on that occasion and through an hackathon, which is one of the methods for participatory design, have generated an idea, a cross-border one, that will be supported through an accompanying phase after this startup phase. As a consequence, I'd like to ask Concetta to show us one of these contributions. Four groups were formed with four different ideas related to sectors that have to do with the Mediterranean diet. Of these four ideas that will be promoted, we'll see the contribution of one of the four groups. As much as food connects no, all elements. Right, no. uh, so our prog uh, product is vegan fermented chestnut uh, Catalanian Slovenian cheese. Cosera. Uh, so our prog uh, product is vegan fermented chestnut uh, Catalanian Slovenian cheese. So it's me, I'm from Slovenia, and these are uh, a collaborative partner from uh, Catalonia. Uh, we are going to work on, uh, as I mentioned, vegan fermented uh, uh, chestnut uh, cheese, a cheese, real cheese, uh, with uh, chestnuts to uh, imagine what are we talking about. Uh, so we are going to develop more sustainable, our value is to develop more sustainable product than existing, uh, to have a huge circulation economy and to bring more healthy uh, cheese. Um, our plant-based, our cheese will be plant-based, gluten-free, soy-free, nut-free, high in protein and high in fiber. It will be handmade, of course, uh, because uh, we have this knowledge, and because uh, chestnuts, they come from natural parks, biosphere reserves. Uh, from uh, so, uh, um, the value we bring is also Il that uh, we, are we are already producers, actually, of vegan cheese, che and Catalanian, uh, they produce uh, chestnuts, flour, and uh, Gemma already worked on pilots and some test uh, cheese eh. recipes. So it's eh, really special product, um, um, and we already have experiences on this, buono, and we already have space to uh, develop this kind of product, fermented product. Uh, we have uh, already experiences in excellent quality products, we already exist in, in some shops. Um, uh, we also have, uh, they also have knowledge uh, of uh, uh, chestnut preservation, they are um, working on preserving also Mediterranean diet ancestry techniques. Um, but what we need, we also need something uh, to, to get to, to, to this uh, uh, pro uh, product. We need some experiments uh, to develop this product, actually, because it's a new product. Uh, we need special uh, equipment. Uh, that's why we need this price. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, we also um, uh, need the destination of properties among uh, dissemination of properties among consumers. So we need to educate uh, people about uh, food culture, how to use this cheese that it's also really healthy and it's good for you. Um, and it has various effects. Um, so uh, as it, um, impact will be like that it have a low uh, impact to the nature, low food impact, uh, footprint impact, because uh, nowadays, uh, now, uh, the cheeses, 
plant based cheeses they come diciamo, from US in or South America and ci sono dei they need to do all the transport and so on Uniti, and Sud now America, we would like to develop sustainable cheese from chestnut which comes Noi from uh, Spain uh, with our knowledge which comes from Slovenia so this would be a huge product uh, and of course Sloveno. milk industry uh, we are doing a really large impact to the environment so with our sustainable uh, chestnut vegan cheese we would ambiente, con as well lower this uh, environmental impact ad um, of course as I mentioned um, already dicevo, uh, among characteristics tra le caratteristiche um, have a impact. So this cheese will be really healthy. Sano. It will have a eh, low it will be low or sano, in allergens such as eh, written here or not. Um, and it will have a lot of probiotics. It will ah, be high in fiber and protein because they are flour, chestnut flour, it's really high in this. Fibre, um, and it will have, of course, a lot of probiotics because we will ferment it. Um, the um, social impact which will have this a project sociale, is that we will um, uh, protect family businesses uh, and we will protect uh, rural areas. Aziende, uh, how ready we are, are uh, we are on a, if you, we can mention it in a scale from one to nine, we are on seven una, because we have a lot of knowledge, we have ingredients sight, and molta we are on the <laughs> Um, eh, what I, uh, yeah, it's important. What is the part of the innovation lancio. here? La parte uh, this cheese it doesn't exist. Uh, it doesn't exist actually vegan cheese with chestnut. Non esiste, um, diciamo, uh, ancora. Uh, cioè, produced cioè, from a new company. Novità, and uh, this uh, cheese will be more sustainable and more eh, healthy. Si tratta di un formaggio molto sostenibile e molto sano da mangiare. Grazie. Bene, questo è il risultato di attività di cooperazione. Part of uh, cooperation activity of stakeholders, uh, socio-economic local actors who have uh, cooperated together for a couple of years in the community and then they cross and meet and actually this new production of uh, an innovation in a tradition and uh, we are going back to the prophetic title even to the event we are enjoying in Caltanissetta, an innovation in the tradition of the dairy sector and then uh, we had two partners, uh, one from Slovenia and one from Catalan, Catalonia, producing cheese. And then they combined honey producers from Portugal and from Silento. An association was involved, an association dealing with sustainable tourism, uh, which means an itinerary will be created, a tourist trail linked to local excellencies uh, whose uh, innovating uh, pit pivot for our uh, food uh, supply chain and which we'll use uh, through uh, channels related to innovation technology and at the same time promoting uh, a sustainable supply chain. This is one of the examples, uh, the project Mediterranean brand diet when brands meet people is uh, handing down uh, as a legacy to the Caltanissetta municipality so that they can duplicate it, copy it and uh, uh, personalize with uh, traditional products, uh, which means an exchange with foreign partners so that they can bring in a new knowledge, another experience uh, of Living Lab uh, translated according to local uh, sensitivity 
is connected to the fact that the Mediterranean diet is uh, the focus of our work uh, because Mediterranean diet is the UNESCO heritage list through creation and co-creation in the framework of UNESCO through a debate of the 70s on the museology that has a new way of promoting the community in an integrated fashion. I kindly ask now the direction to broadcast the presentation. And then I'll stop here. This is a presentation I made in February 2019 in Tirana. I wrote this project as a COPEM. I followed on the project and I keep working uh, within the Caltanissetta municipality. In Caltanissetta, I've come across uh, part of the team with the project mentioned by Lucio Tambuzzo yesterday, where we wrote uh, the report for application for the Mediterranean diet to submit to UNESCO. Jesse March was with us and who is with me in the technical strategic uh, management of this project. And he then gave us the opportunity to experiment with the first uh, uh, application uh, report for UNESCO and that was successful because some uh, uh, years uh, after uh, UNESCO in Paris uh, passed uh, the Mediterranean diet and included it in the intangible heritage of the world at least. Uh, this presentation aims at introducing the living lab and we go back to the quotation by Professor Travani, the living lab created in Montreal in MD.net project in the first two years and referring to best practices, including by UNESCO in the list of uh, good practices or so best practices. Uh, UNESCO has the World Heritage List, which is the most uh, popular list. Uh, uh, they have the intangible heritage, but also good uh, practice, uh, also for the management and promotion of the material heritage. In 2012, uh, UNESCO included the uh, Batava Eco Museum. It's a, a vessel, a small vessel, where you sail to the higher part of the Adriatic Sea. And uh, it is uh, an intangible heritage from Croatia with some specific methodologies for promotion, value protection through the community, through a Nico Museum at Dynamic. And this is why it was included in the list of good practices. It's in English. Slides are in English, you don't need to read them. However, this is a way to respond to complexity of a modern world. I introduced it in 2019 because then from 2020 we have a new world, so this is quite old fashioned and now. Okay. 
with Copham, uh, we launched, uh, even though Copham is not included in the project, so we have the Eco Museums. Uh, A quadruple helix uh, project where the partnerships of the four P's, uh, public, private, uh, participated partnership, is uh, represented as an example. Eco Museum is a UNESCO terminology living lab, uh, is a e U Brussels uh, terminology. The dynamics are the same and revolve around the same principles, which is co-creation. The discovery and uh, sharing, the pooling of resources, uh, ideas, uh, participated in the behavior processes the testing implementation of living scenarios as well as a constant assessment through the process to make the process stay alive constantly so an eco museum acknowledged by unesco as best practice is a dynamic way in which uh, communities uh, preserve, interpret, and manage their heritage for a sustainable development. It is based on a community agreement. This agreement is one uh, by which a community commits to safeguard uh, and uh, promote one's own community through the taking care of one's own heritage. So it's the community itself that chooses and elects its heritage. So the community preserves, but most of all interprets. And here, it's important to underline that the intangible heritage are alive if constantly interpreted and that the Mediterranean died to answer to the provocations by Professor Inglés, who spoke this morning. The Mediterranean diet is such if constantly interpreted and if it does not stay only in books or just in uh, recipes used for cooking. This is the Eco Museum of the Normans Lands uh, created with this project. Uh, it focuses on uh, Montreal uh, and small towns uh, surrounding it. Uh, Montreal is close to Palermo and uh, lives in the shadow of the capital city. Is the sixth town in Italy by a surface area, and the second in Sicily after Noto, San Giuseppe Iato, San Cipirello are included in it. So the whole counties, so to say, with six more municipalities included. The Eco Museum does not aim to increase the, promote the value of a single heritage, but the whole community and territory. The community detects and constantly interprets. So, Montreal is the major attracting element with the most clear identity. And all this is mirrored in the cathedral and in feeling as a community, which is a Norman, Byzantine and Arab at the same time. Then it was created from the combination of community of 
bodies uh, such as COPEM, the Euro Mediterranean Regional Office, uh, acknowledged by UNESCO for the safeguard uh, and the promotion of uh, a material heritage at what level then uh, local producers for wine and uh, food related to the Mediterranean diet, uh, non-for-profit -prof associations, uh, artisans, uh, tourism and food and beverage operators and or artists, uh, and of course, uh, schools. The topic of formal and non-formal education is included in all the participation uh, practice uh, stemming from the experience of this project. Uh, one of the main uh, actions uh, started by the Eco Museums was the uh, process of uh, mapping uh, the territorial excellences. Uh, I have uh, fulfill the task of uh, promoting and telling you some of the experiences uh, related to the project that be another activity in Cartaniceta uh, which will help uh, co-create with the park partners now I'm going to stop and kindly invite all of you to make remarks, observations, both related to your experiences and to what you mean by uh, education related to the park. And also, if you want to think uh, how the experiences of the project can be converted in useful operational activities. And I'd like to start from Matteo Fici, if you want to come forward to the stage, because then you are going to catch a train. Then Mrs. Candura, Mr. Dilena is online. He's online. Thank you and welcome. Engineer San Filippo, Professor Di Micheli, Professor Mrs. Pambini. Please take a seat. Then, Professor Mrs. Privitera, I've already spoken with her, she's here. And uh, Professor Mrs. Argentati, Professor Buttita, of course. So, Mr. Silva. And uh, welcome. Welcome, everybody to the stage. Now, once uh, we are settled, Matteo, you can take the floor and uh, be sitting here listening to you. Thank you very much to all of you, because we have learned a lot these days. We followed three of the five days. It was a small sacrifice, but we were happy to do it because we're participating um, in the creation of the park. We are part of the technical group and we're working hard as Francesco and Pepe know. 
Let me introduce myself. I'm, um, I will sort of um, represent a different voice from what you have heard so far, because I represent the private sector, the so-called business pillar. Even if uh, what I'm here to represent is small to medium-sized companies and not multinationals, so don't kill me. I represent ASO Provider, which is a national association of companies. We are internet service providers, those allowing small villages and mountain areas, not only cities, to be connected. You know, you have Team, Vodafone, and um, other big providers that are only interested in uh, increasing their business, but they often have uh, problems uh, of lack of technicians, um, oversizing uh, infrastructures which have been sold meanwhile, and also telephone stations. So they have more problems than we have. And therefore, they cannot reach areas where they cannot have a return on their investment. Instead, we represent proximity providers. We have 250 companies in ASO provider. We cover all the Italian provinces. We work in very difficult conditions. So we have to go to the mountain areas, to the ships. We also uh, climb poles and difficult operations that uh, others don't do or can't do. We have technical expertise that the other big providers don't have because we can have technicians from all the Italian provinces, while the logic of the larger providers is to concentrate technicians and engineers in their offices in Milan and Rome without high skills and competences in locally. That's why the broadband installations have been postponed because you cannot obtain authorizations if you sit comfortably in Rome, you have to talk to the local administrators, to the local government, we are able to do so. You may say, maybe you are at the wrong uh, um, meeting. Uh, the telecommunication meeting is on the other side of the road in another theater. We know that broadband connections uh, and also portals, uh, services, uh, cloud services, etc. Well, all this is fundamental. It's instrumental for all operations aiming at local development uh, and development of a system because you have to communicate. We've learned a lot of we've learned a lot during the lockdown. Now we um, organize events. Uh, in um, presence and we wonder why others are connected online of course uh, it's um, there's a dual possibility and it's better that more people can follow i'm an astrophysicist i worked uh, with satellites uh, we uh, discovered the gamma ray bursts that correspond to phenomena where a black hole goes inside another black hole. At that point, the emission of energy is equal to that of all stars of the universe. In just one phenomenon, the energy is emitted that all stars of the universe emit. They're, they're violent phenomena discovered by a satellite that left in 1995, and we were really very successful. I've got a technical background, and then I um, have done work on radars and internet. Now, I also 
I'm also responsible for startups, um, innovation and startup economy. You may wonder, what are you doing here? We believe that the technologies that we implement are useful to create a system. Whether you talk about uh, diets, whether you talk about local skills and competencies, you know, it's very important that these competencies are available in a network and everybody knows what they are. We are proximity providers and to us, local development is most important. That's why we're here. Networking, it's a very important word for us, but also for you, as we heard several times, everybody realizes that this is what we need. Turning to training, I have two children. One works in London and the other one in Dublin. The one in London works in the finance business. And one of his colleagues asked him, there is a municipality called Mustolesi in Sicily. I was told that they sell houses for one euro. My son called me and said, is there such a place? I said, yes, I heard about it, but I've never been there. So the, the guy from London actually bought a house there. Meanwhile, we recently promoted a project which involved some of the park sites. It was about smart working, a caravan traveling all over Italy in the north and then in the south and, and in Sicily for 10 days. We sponsored it. The reporter driving the caravan is somehow promoting smart working. In his head, he knows very well what you need in smart working. How does Musameli combine with uh, smart working? I mean, if you decide to move from London to Musameli, even if the house is worth one euro, well, it actually, the cost is actually not one euro because you have to restructure that house. But anyway, after spending one year in Musumeli, of course, it's a nice place if you breathe fresh air, etc. But uh, in the north of England, they also have similar villages. And perhaps uh, it's not that uh, uh, cold here, even if it's quite cold today, but it's 10 degrees only. Now, after one month, after spending one month in uh, a small village in Sicily, a Londoner would go back home because he is so used to um, leading a different life. Maybe he will come back once to Musumeli and then uh, no more. What do we need in order to develop these beautiful villages? Well, this is basically what the objective of the park is. We're talking about Mediterranean lifestyle, but we also need training for this. Training about what? I will say a few things which, um, you know, caused shivers in some of the people we work with. But this is um, quite frequent and an improvement can only be obtained through confrontation. One needs marketing, digitalization and soft skills. All those skills that are taught abroad are not here. I'm a professor of physics and I can tell you that 
Soft skills are not taught in Italian schools. What do soft skills have to do with this? This morning, uh, we heard about the Sicilian diet, that we cannot uh, promote it, etc. This is what Professor Inglese said this morning. I'm not really an expert in this field, but Italian restaurants are full all the time abroad. I know of success stories where Italian or Sicilian uh, restaurant owners opened restaurants in uh, um, Milan and then abroad. What we pay 1.50 euro here was worth three there and, it, and every um, piece was half as, it is, uh, as they are here. So very successful operations. We have the contents, we have the products, and after all, we have the skills. That's not the problem. The problem is that we cannot sell ourselves. We cannot give value to what we have, not because we are stupid, but because we don't have the soft skills. We do not focus enough on our self-esteem. We're very good. We know all the works by Dante by heart. We know about chemistry, literature, engineering. I worked in international consortia where we did the whole technical work and then a partner came from elsewhere. He had not even touched a screwdriver, but he knew how to use the PowerPoint. He could speak English very well. You know, this guy, and it doesn't really take much to learn how to sell things, but you have to learn how to. Those people became project leaders because they knew how to sell certain products that we had developed. So this is what happens. When talking about training, we have to focus on soft skills, digitalization, marketing, which shouldn't see, be seen as a bad word. What I tell Francesco is this park has to be appealing and attractive to young people. It shouldn't simply be an opportunity for employment for young people, but it must be an area where young people from all over the world come and enjoy their time. To do so, we have to accept something which maybe we don't like that much. It's like having a Ferrari here and not being able to drive it. As a teacher, I'm quite convinced that we lack the soft skills, which basically lead to self-esteem, to promoting what we have, knowing how to promote it outside. And then, and I'll come to a conclusion, what can I say in terms of contribution to training? Yesterday, Juicy spoke about our project when uh, talking about uh, promoting local assets. Well, this has to do with us a provider because we have put in place a platform to market uh, tourist opportunities and experiences a top-notch platform to make people aware of what we do and what we sell abroad. It's a platform that includes tourist activities. You know that this industry is not very much uh, digitalized. Here we don't have multinationals uh, such as Booking or Airbnb. The idea 
is to work to transform non-tourist products into tourist products and market these products. You know, in um, 10 years time, not even in 10 years time, there can be a um, sort of booking.com for local tourist activities because they are too local and too specific. We have also devised something else in addition to the platform. All Pepe's friends are very stubborn. We work hard for the development of Sicily. We organized a training course for the stakeholders of this business. We have experimented because we have experimented that many do experiential tourism abroad, but this is not actually what this form of tourism, uh, this is not exactly what they offer. So we organized training activities. Initially, I would explain my students for one hour, physical uh, or concepts in physics, similarly to what was normal at university. I would um, write concepts on the blackboard, but my students, after paying attention for 10 minutes, would do something else. So in one hour, you need 10 minutes theory and then 50 minutes practice. Then you explain again and then practice again. This is my training model in order to have consistent attention. We have developed uh, a course for experiential tourism based uh, precisely on this. And by the way, this is one of the very first projects for the park. The park asked for partnership and project for partners and projects and we have submitted this it's a tourist oriented project with the platform with the possibility of networking all the people involved we do not tell anyone about what we do. We work with the territory and with everybody. So we've made our expertise available for the tourist part. Another thing we can make available, apart from this travel experience, is something we did in 2017 on sustainable mobility. It's a project that I submitted for a, a technical high school. The project uh, was implemented in Palermo, and now we have another two in another two planned. You know, the these technical high schools are very vocational oriented. They can do lots of things in order to train their students. I think that among the most important park infrastructures, we have the communication and also the infrastructure, railroads, uh, roads uh, and slow trails. So we are available to train people on this. Uh, you know, the Aero Club, the port system in Palermo, the railroad. These are all entities that we work with in the mobility sector. And we can also deal with 
local development, uh, local mobility development. This is uh, what these uh, students at the technical high school are supposed to do and study. This is what we can make available to the park. We are here at your disposal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Matteo. Thanks for this interesting contribution. I do hope you'll be one of the actors of the forthcoming co-creation labs. Yeah, by the way, I remember we talked about this. I've known Jesse for more than 20 years. Probably I also met you on a number of occasions, though I can't remember where, but we are ready to start such a cooperation as well, starting from the coming days with Francesco, Concetta and Jesse, we will work hard in order to plan the future activities with all the Interreg Med partners so that the experiences and the expertise gained elsewhere can be uh, transferred here, both in terms of methodology and deliverables. Obtained through the uh, co creation process. Presumably, this meeting will be scheduled for mid January. You will receive more information about this. And if you want, of course, any contributions on your part will be well accepted for hackathons, uh, elevator pitches, uh, and the like. For example, work cafe. I do apologize with the interpreters. I have to turn around uh, sometimes because my community, my partners are here on stage. While turning around, I saw Professor Privitera, and I would like to give the floor to her. Over to you, please. The floor is yours. Grazie, grazie, gentilissimi e gentilissimi tutti qui, e io vi ringrazio per essere stata invitata. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's very kind of you, and I'd like to thank you for inviting me. My name is Privitera from Catania University. <laughs> I'm the president of the Faculty of Science for Tourism, and I also teach Geography of Tourism. Today is the day of education. Uh, science for Tourism is a faculty training young students. Tourism is 4.0 today, so our students uh, who I hope can find a room in the lifestyle of the park. Uh, students with an archaeological training, uh, historical, legal, cross educational knowledge for entrepreneurship. What is important today is to provide these skills that will teach entrepreneurship, cross-sectional skills so that these young people can create new jobs. We're not finding out uh, or discovering new things. Uh, tourism today is an experiential tourism. Tourism is a resource. We first of all need to communicate it digitally. And at the same time, we need to provide a diverse offer with several different options. Today, we spoke about tourism of trails, we know very well that walking uh, uh, 
along a trail does not just provide the interior benefits, but it gives you the opportunity to appreciate many things. This is what our students study. Education is important. We look at the education of the youth, but it's going to be the youth who are going to develop these entrepreneurship in the uh, Mediterranean style. Park. We need to start from our community, which is our resource, local products, food, and what uh, Crash uh, told us in that video. We do have those things in our region. Mr. Fiji was speaking about uh, startups. Uh, the other thing we need to look at startups are the ones we need to promote the value of. I hope that with a park project we can start new things, uh, not just in Catania, in Messina, and in Palermo, in Catania, uh, from Catania, we can provide you a big help with 4.0 tourism. We should look at our tourists. Uh, it's us, local people are tourists. We do not need to look at international tourism. At the moment, there is a big fear, concern with the pandemic. We can start with the local tourists and uh, we should meet the needs of all other international tourists. Then if we want a Japanese tourist, American tourist, the German tourist, we should meet their needs. We shouldn't forget about their needs. And we should communicate digitally because this is not the future, the present. Thank you once more. I'm a teacher of geography of tourism. We look at tourism of the world, the different types of tourism existing in the world, wine, food, tourism, experiential tourism, sustainable tourism, religious tourism, cinema tourism. Well, we need a specific training for these types of tourism. If we just create a bigger container, we run the risk of being too general and neglect specific resources for our community and from our community. Thank you. Thank you so much and welcome Professor Dimicelli and please reach us on the stage. In the meantime, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Salvatore Di Lena. Good evening, everybody. I'm sorry I cannot be there with you. Last night I had the third job and I was recommended to stay at home. I live in Mussomeli in a specific framework. I need about uh, one hour of difficult road to drive uh, to reach Caltanissetta. I'd like to thank uh, the mayor of Caltanissetta, the councillor, for having created this beautiful project starting from Caltanissetta and gathering the actors of the political, social and economic actors of the whole community together with the other institutions, uh, the municipality is uh, promoting uh, the whole area. Our town is placed uh, uh, as a ranking uh, in the last places uh, because of uh, standards of life, uh, income, uh, so the 
province of Caltanissetta does not rank among the top participants. These are data, and we need to reverse the trend. The Association of Accountants would like to contribute with the help of professionals with the best practices that we as accountants make available also for public institutions. We were defined and classified as professionals useful for the country. I'd like to tell you something about a couple of years ago. I was in Marzamemi. Oscar Farinetti, the CEO of Italy, EAT Italy, was sitting there while I was having dinner. At the end of dinner, I stopped speaking with Oscar Farinetti and I told him uh, why don't you provide a contribution to our Sicily, to our island. He said you have a unique brand. You must be good at exploiting it and networking it with other world brands. You have excellent products and you must exploit them. And this is an important warning coming from someone who internationally deals with these types of activities and was amazed by his way of speaking of Sicilian brands. The park and the Mediterranean lifestyle aim at an integrated uh, economic approach with uh, good income, good enterprises, and also good uh, public administration. The public administration must be the glue for a system involving all entrepreneurs, uh, associations, uh, who all aim at implementing uh, stable jobs uh, and with an income which is uh, in line with the needs of employed people uh, to meet the highest working standards. A rating company has uh, increased the rating of the Italian country. Our rating has been increased and we're very proud of this because this gives us the opportunity to hope in our economy because our economy has been weak over the past years and with this recovery we're trying to improve that macroeconomic data coming from the OECD tell us that the GDP will be 6.3 more. Inflation will be about 3%. The worrying data is unemployment, which doesn't seem to be decreasing. This condition is related to cash flow with the funds from the government and then the super bonus and other measures have given an important drive for the growth in the country. And together with the resilience and recovery plan, there'll be a new drive, especially for new digital technologies uh, environmental transition, uh, the economic system, uh, strategic uh, sectors of the environment, the renewables. Uh, our project too, the project uh, which is uh, 
about uh, to be implemented by the Caltani Center City will provide a final drive uh, for our economy. The youth can rethink about their future framed in Sicily. Our children have studied and study in Northern Italy. Then after they complete their studies, they stay there because they find uh, jobs there. There could be many opportunities uh, related to Mediterranean lifestyle, agribusiness, uh, wine production, integrated uh, activities of leisure time related to physical and psychological well-being. Uh, elite tourism could provide a father driver. So the project is the promoter of these initiatives. At this point, the youth needs to be trained and educated to stay in Sicily. Universities come into play, vocational training centers come into play. Our association of accountants in Caltanissetta, we promote this with the youth. And from now onward, we will draw the attention on education and training revolving around this new way of seeing enterprises, tourism, food and wine sector. We will be promoting this culture, not just with our members, but also with the young entrepreneurs who will be happy to start this new activity. And if this project is implemented, that be the flagship for our economy, we are careful partners in conversation also the for the assessment of the legal status uh, that will be used uh, to create uh, the legal profile of the park uh, an appropriate uh, governance and organizational model will be important we want to support the governance that will be set up for this park, which is about to come into being. We have already got in touch with colleagues in the north of Italy with similar experiences and who know this activity very well. Tourist promotion, food and wine promotion. I'm referring to the Lang area, the Piedmont colleagues who will be very happy to contribute with their expertise. The accountants in the Caltanissetta area are willing to cooperate uh, on a, an agreement uh, protocol. We can therefore create uh, a project which is not just an economic project, but a lifestyle which is important for us, for our future and the future of our children. I think I should stop here and give the floor to other participants. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dilena. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you very much for your contribution to training in formal, formal education. And also thanks on behalf of the park for your availability to accompany the creation phase and accompany us in the selection of the best governance model in the park. Thank you very much for your contribution. 
So we have moved them from an entrepreneur who also trains in order to be able to sell his products and services, then we have considered excellent university training, which fits very well in this process. We have considered continuing education and lifelong training for those working in certain professions and in the professions in general. But let me go back to the university world and give the floor to Professor Ignazio Buttitta. I'd like to ask you a special question. Please answer this question if you can. The intangible assets, can they attract tourism? Well, the answer to your question is I listen very carefully, and I would like to title my talk, Theory and Praxis, Techniques and Contents. What we have heard from Mr. Fici is absolute truth. There are skills and competencies that are absolutely mandatory technical skills with a view to manipulating and handling a certain element in the proper way. But as we all know, between theoretical competencies and practical applications between the School of Medicine and Surgery and the experience as a surgeon and between the study of the mechanics of fluids and the treatment of a circulatory disease, there is a gap. You see, dear colleague, I was a teacher at your degree course, and I also taught at the Faculty of Tourism in Palermo. I, when I was a teacher, I gave contents to my students. I didn't speak in abstract terms about the heritage and so on and so forth. And my students were happy to hear about the popular festivals in Sicily, the typical food eaten in Sicily, they were happy. And if I teach anthropology of the cultural heritage and I explain the history of anthropology or the mechanisms of um, anthropology processes, etc., it's fine, but it's not enough. In Palermo, in Catania, my students were happy to hear about arts, about history of the art and uh, sites in Sicily where they could find this. Then they also studied marketing. One technique does not apply to all different disciplines. Well, this is a general concept. We have to be very careful. Therefore, Ignazio, the most important thing is mapping, right? Yes. I think we should first and foremost develop a curriculum with the proper contents. I'm the president of the Ignazio Buttitta Foundation. It's a private foundation. It's a not-for-profit foundation. 
I must say that lots of our activities are linked to education. We teach, we speak at meetings. Very often we talk to young people, to students. Workshops are very important. If you want to explain how important the poopy are in Sicily, the best thing to do is to make the poopy. Of course, it was expensive, but all these uh, students were trained adequately on how to make the poopy, the typical Sicilian poopy. Of course, one needs to work in a team, but certain competencies are mandatory, they are required. Thinking of intangible assets and intangible heritage, we don't really deal with that in an appropriate way. You know, popular traditions, at some point, were set aside. They are retrieved at the moment, but according to a different logic. I think it's quite clear to everybody. I think we have to be careful within this large project because we have skills, we have great expertise and technical skills, but concerning traditional food, uh, and I'm not talking about the Mediterranean diet, but I'm speaking of the traditional food from Sicily and the other areas of the project, but they are different. The festive food, for example. My last book is titled The Festive Food in Sicily. This is an extraordinary type of heritage. You have to practically know where certain things are eaten, why they have a certain shape, why a product is made in a certain way. This is to build storytelling. With proper storytelling, you don't have to invent anything to promote local products. There are tr true stories that can be told. They're very attractive, much more attractive than incre incredible, silly things which are told about products such as the tuna fish of Favignana. Storytelling, true storytelling is much nicer than other stories, but to be able to do this storytelling, you have to study. You cannot invent, you cannot make up anything. You cannot limit yourself to the surface. You have to understand things in depth. It's not just a matter of calculating two plus two. You have to understand what to the two twos mean and what the plus means. I mean, without training, such a project can never work. Thank you, Ignazio. Thank you, Ignazio, for covering a very core topic. You're very passionate about the core issues we need to focus on, be they 
training activities, travel experience activities, or just theory. It is most important that training is the pillar around which the whole system should develop because you can create a, a community through training, not only storytelling. I think we should all welcome most warmly our royal host. Therefore, I'd like to invite Roberto Gambino, the mayor, to come up here and contribute to our considerations. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Thanks, Natale. I'd like to say hello to you before leaving. There are lots of events today because of the um, celebration for Saint Barbara. There was something in the cathedral this morning and there are many more events. The theater is connected directly with the municipal offices. So it was easy for me to come and go. I must say that these days were highly productive and fruitful. I think you have come to a sort of shared dogma to build a strategic project for central Sicily that will involve the whole of Sicily. All the speakers in presence and remotely said very interesting things. Professor Butita said exceptional things. I studied anthropology with his father, and I must say that I learned the popular traditions of our region, and they are fundamental to proceed with such a project. I believe that training has to be the driving force Everything can be built through training and education. You cannot make up anything because lots of things were invented recently. What really counts is what is true, what has been handed down in history. Well, Sicily doesn't need to invent anything. Once I was in the US, they took me to an old Western village where everything was made up. Their problem is that they don't have any uh, history. So in this village, there was uh, a fake farrier, for example, or the horses. Instead, we don't have to make a cup because we have many years of history behind us. I would like to thank very much Francesco Nicoletti and Beppe because they were able to keep a system together. This was visible not only in uh, these five days, uh, but also in the past uh, months, uh, where more than 100 municipalities uh, worked together in Sicily. This is something exceptional. We have lots of um, small entities and municipalities that are now working in the same direction. Participation was really huge and the shared contents were of great value 
So I should thank Francesco and Beppe. Certainly he will conclude and will stay here to speak for 45 minutes. I would also like to thank our your international partners. I'm pretty sure we're starting on the right foot. Thanks to all the contributions that will be able to implement a great strategic project. What is important is to allow this area to grow. Perhaps it's a fortune that it has not grown before. We have to use underdevelopment as our added value. We're very happy because in central Sicily, we don't have the heavy industry, we don't have pollution. So what is, uh, what was considered as negative uh, has to be transformed into a positive factor. We hear a lot about resilience, so this is what we have to adopt. Thank you and enjoy your work. Thank you very much, Roberto. Thanks to the mayor of Caltanissetta. Maybe we are more resistant than resilient. calling ourselves uh, as uh, a metal and saying that we have a property that comes from metal working means or would mean that we are not human beings and we're probably more resistant than resilient. Otherwise, it seems that we are hammered all the time and then we obtain or go back to our original shape again. It's much better to be resistant than resilient. In line with what Professor Buttita said, I'd like to call upon Professor Pambini. adding that our anthropological roots should rather be called heritage. We also safeguard all this heritage and through training and education, we have to pass this over and this down to the future generations. I would like to um, start with this, uh, Professor Pambini. Now the floor is yours. Good evening, everybody. It's always a pleasure for me to come back to Caltanissetta. I'd like to thank Francesco Nicoletti and Beppe De Santis. I spend most of my life here. I live in Catania now, but I'm closely linked to this area. When I came, I while well, you were speaking about the echo museums of the Normans, combining all the observations that were made, including those by the mayor, with whom I am linked by a strong professional relationships, I wonder why don't we develop an echo museum of the Sicani here? I was also interested in listening to Professor Privitera, who is the um, president of the degree course where I teach. I was also interested in what the other speakers said. We have to train so as to make all the wealth of this uh, territory well known. I was superintendent in Ragusa, Siracusa, Agrigento. I must say that this area has lots of 
important assets, not just the archaeology assets. Um, we need to train people who can uh, spread this uh, knowledge. There is a whole heritage of traditions over and above the Mediterranean diet. The festivities, um, the festivals, the cuisine, there are so many recipes which could help favor the recovery of this area. But we have to disseminate these transitions. We have these traditions, we have to preserve them. Otherwise, they would go lost. When talking about training, why don't we think of an eco museum of the land of the Sicani or Sicanians? There are beautiful uh, sites like Santa Rita. They are abandoned. Professor Fici was saying that people would buy a house for one euro and then would go. Sure, because they don't find anything else. But if they come here and find a lot around them, archaeology, history of art, culture, then they would stay. So we have to promote all this territory. First of all, we must train people so that they know this territory. If one buys a one euro house, then once he or she is here, then they discover much more. They can go to Butera, to Cefalu, to the seaside, and also to mountain sites that are really exceptional, but they tend to be forgotten. I believe training is possible, and I believe this territory can become a model for promotion. And I'm pretty sure that many of the students in our degree course, and many of whom come from here and from Jela, can start working in the tourist area exploiting the church celebrations, uh, the cuisine uh, trails, uh, the archaeology trails, etc. We are losing an archaeology, the archaeology heritage, which is unique. The inland museums in Marianopoli or Caltanissetta are real gems, uh, but how many people go and see those sites? No one. If you combine both tangible and intangible assets, I believe that this territory can be a driver for training, safeguarding, preserving, and handing down the traditions, the roots, the history of all, and also the history of art. I'm very pleased to be part of this park, but now we have to allow the park to take off, uh, reaching all the desired goals, because in a moment like this one, we cannot afford giving up. Otherwise, uh, everything we have said so far would be lost. We are ready to help the park take off so that the hinterland of Sicily can become a bridge towards other realities. Thank you very much. Professoressa Pambini, io sono felicissimo. Professor Pambini, I'm very happy that the mayor has been listening to your intervention and the idea of setting up an eco-museum of uh, Sicanian lands here. I personally have been uh, 
creating Ego Museums uh, since 2006. Uh, my first Ego Museums uh, was created in Crete. You are women and men who know culture, know the huge culture in Crete and the debt that our civilization has uh, towards that beautiful land, uh, which is the sister of Sicily. What you are referring to is uh, just that. We've got uh, those elements here. The mountain next to Nicosia. At the moment, I can't remember the name. Uh, there is a, a Mycenaean uh, settlement, and uh, an independent scholar wrote a book uh, by thinking that when uh, rivers were uh, used uh, for transport with the special boats. Uh, if we think uh, about uh, some uh, stories uh, told of uh, a princess uh, uh, who had been uh, kidnapped or had uh, run away maybe <laughs> with uh, someone and uh, she had come to Sicily so the king chased them and goes as far as the mount going on the salso which was a river then and has a control on this settlement which had been occupied and I will be happy to give you the title of this book my Sinians were coming here for sulfur salt and sulfur We all wondered uh, about uh, the reason why Mycenaeans would come here. Crete states that in Monte Grande, near Palma di Monte Chiara, we got marks for blocks of the sulfur so we uh, found out we realized that they were coming for sulfur they stopped here to live and they became a part of the cycons third century before Christ was the period when we realized that starting with these activities they would come here for sulfur and salt another strength of the Caltanissetta identity is the mining activity here we've got a social entrepreneur who promotes going along trails through the mines. I apologize with you because this topic is a really, really interesting. Uh, Mrs. Argentati, the president of one of the excellent districts in Sicily, uh, 
when we speak about Sicily, many people speak about uh, Montalbano. Many others uh, speak about uh, blood oranges. This district is very important from a communication viewpoint. Uh, how can uh, training and education be so continuous uh, and constant? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the mayor Mr. Nicoletti and all the people who are working on this project. I was born in Caltanissetta, even though I've lived in Catania for about 30 years. I'm an agronomist and a president of the production districts for citrus fruits. We've got uh, uh, five uh, DOP, EGP, we've got the lemon from Syracuse, the blood orange, uh, the interdonato lemon, the DOP uh, DLP in uh, Ribera, and uh, other citrus fruits. Uh, the idea is to have a team, have together all the citrus chain in Sicily. We've done it in different ways, also through training. We've uh, organized a lot of training courses by using experts, high level experts, uh, higher education uh, school, Arches from Palermo involving also university professors. Uh, we're speaking about many different uh, contents, cooperation tools, integrated relational tourism. And thanks to this course, Le Vie della Zagara is a, a new project which is being started. The, the Via della Zagara, the trails of uh, uh, citrus uh, blooms or citrus flowers. So for tangerines, uh, oranges and lemons, uh, there is a <laughs> wide interest uh, on the side of tourists, uh, because they want to come to Sicily, they also want to go and see the uh, processing uh, company. They want to get into the storytelling uh, with the district. We have uh, contributed to a wider food district with a different supply chains such as uh, fruit, uh, peach, uh, fruit and vegetables. Uh, and in one of uh, the meetings to set up the district uh, was uh, organized uh, and held in Caltanissetta. And that is training too. As you can understand, all my work revolves around the fact that I need to get people to cooperate, which is the most difficult thing to do, especially in Sicily, because all the things we said, which are true, Sicily has everything, Sicily is beautiful. And sometimes I get tired to hear people say that Sicily is beautiful. We always say these things, but we uh, sometimes fail in doing uh, some things. There is an exaggerated individualism uh, combined uh, with uh, some uh, difficulties uh, when you try to make uh, the ends meet uh, in, on an individual basis. And another thing missing is uh, ethical community, ethical sense in the community, not just for individuals, but enterprises. The enterprises uh, 
for me means uh, primary production or the incoming of tourists. The park should take into consideration and use tools aiming at achieving primary objectives, which are all the ones in the park. We should get people cooperate. Enterprises cooperate among them. And then Sicily is unusual. Maybe people at home are perfectly clean, but then they throw a piece of paper in the street and people are not sensitive about this. Something else I'd like to say is that uh, with my work, I've uh, been uh, traveling all uh, Sicily, all the areas in Sicily which are grown with uh, citrus trees. I'm speaking about the coastal areas, basically. And I've met a lot of people even all over Italy. I have a farm in Resultano where there's nothing. When people tell me, what can you find in Resultano? There's nothing in Resultano. This is why you should come, because nothing is interesting in Resultano. There is a castle 800 meters away from the farm, uh, from the citrus uh, groves, uh, which we wanted tourists to see this castle. I went and spoke with the superintendent's office. I'm convinced that in a place at uh, the center of Sicily, the heart of Sicily, where there isn't anything uh, typical dishes, the view, wheat, olive, uh, trees, well, there are no attractions. Uh, it's not Taormina or the Montalbano Trail where you can find all the Baroque art. Just because there is nothing, uh, well, uh, these uh, areas need to be revived. Uh, once we organize the medieval dinner with the specialized uh, catering service, uh, musicians wearing medieval costumes, uh, then uh, we walked as far as the council, that event was successful. People came to see the event, they enjoyed themselves. The Pink Floyd fans gathering was something I organized. We had people coming from all over Sicily. And then in the meantime, if we want to revive these places, we need to keep young people stay. And young people stay if there are other young people. We need to do young things, things for the young. We cannot promote these communities, these territories, if we just speak about art, uh, food, of course, all the things we say is perfect, uh, but we need to also think uh, about uh, Castel Buono, for example. I was there. There's a special festival, cultural festival there. I was there for four days. Uh, they sell many things. Uh, Fiasconaro sold so many panettone in that occasion. And I think we should look at a tourism that attracts young people and keeps uh, young people here. And after you've eaten, after you've had your drinks, you've seen the museum, 
all these things are fantastic, but we need to add something else where young people can have fun, can find attracting things. And, mm, uh, would there be the opportunity within this project uh, to involve uh, young people who are trained at university level, who are trained anyway, and give these young people an objective, maybe to invent or create something? My daughter lives in London. My son lives in Milan. And my daughter studied in Milan and then in London. And when she was in London, she found a job. If they're here, they cannot find a job. So why should they stay here? They could be genius, but if they do not find a job, they just go away. Maybe we could have a startup within the park that can involve the youth and they can uh, bring new ideas. The digitalization, for instance, they have a vision which is completely different from ours. And I think we should uh, welcome this vision. Otherwise, we run the risk of promoting a community by using the same old method. I'm sure that your suggestion, thanks to Virtuous Cooperation for the promoters of this approach and uh, the way they have been cooperating with uh, Sicilian universities, I'm sure this will be an opportunity to uh, respond to your suggestions. Well, in the first part of your intervention, the park was created on purpose to add all the possible experiences in the framework of this community because we had excellent trails. It's like having parallel roads that they will never meet. And this is not working. We need a system, we need a network. The park was nicknamed the network of the networks. Single actions, uh, specialized people, experts. Uh, well, the, the point is that uh, uh, they are not uh, cooperating with the others. There is no osmosis. Uh, Cooperation, cooperation among networks is important. Now it's high time we did all these things. There is no other option. We need to go along a pathway. This is just one step along the pathway. And then your last observation of the youth. We call this initiative park just to make a reference to something related to joy. As the bishop said, we are connected to the culture of death of the underground. We can have our past, but well, we're always looking at the past, instead we should be looking at the future. We are speaking about the generativity innovation. If you just read the title of the event, you understand what we are heading to. We need a cooperation with the youth. We spoke about training today. 
education. Well, this is the most important thing we need to do. We need to involve the young people. They can study out of Sicily, but then, as you said, your children studied out of Sicily and they found jobs out of Sicily. And I understand that your grandchildren will be living in another part of the world. And this is the worst defeat uh, an area may be subject to because you are not in charge of your future. You need to start again. You need to change because something was not working. Together, we need to decide on how to change creativity. And I always use this example. We are talking about a new recreational areas, open recreational areas. We are not thinking about this because we want to digitalize. The problem is enormous digitalization because the youth live on digital devices. But what is missing is reality. When something happens in a school and the news is broadcast through the social networks, they are destroyed. They are in a mess because they think that the social network reality is the only reality. Tools must be used. We must not be used by the tools. It's us who must be in charge of the digital devices. Before giving the floor to Professor Di Micheli, please allow me to say something when uh, uh, <laughs> when you say that <laughs> Resultano is the dark side of the moon, uh, and, but something should be there. Good evening and thanks for the invitation. I am a teacher at the Department of the Agricultural, um, Nutritional and Forestry Sciences of the University of Palermo. And I'm also the president of EURSU Palermo, which is uh, the organization for the right to study in Western Sicily. I'd like to start from uh, the talk by Mrs. Argentati. I thought of two very important things. Also, when the mayor talked, in my, um, for my PhD, I spent one year in Australia. Australia has 20 million inhabitants scattered in a much broader area than Sicily. They sold their landscape. You would go to places where there was nothing simply to enjoy the landscape. They have enormous national parks. What is one supposed to do there? Take a walk? enjoy the landscape, even if there's nothing, as you say. And then I was also impressed by something else in your presentation. You, um, you, were, you live in Sicily and you enjoy the coastline, but Sicily is not just the sea. We have to take tourists from the coastline to the hinterland. And the inland of Sicily has a certain value from the anthropologist standpoint. 
there is nothing in a way, but beauty may grow exactly and precisely in those places. While listening to the mayor, I thought, when he said, you know, that he went to the United States, etc. I thought the same happened to me in uh, Australia. They showed me the first post office they had in Adelaide. You know, the oldest thing they had. This is what they were selling tourists. Of course, the value of this was much lower than what we have. Now something about the human capital. We talked about training, training of all kinds. We support our young people within our organization for the right to study so that they can achieve their dreams. We give 12,000 scholarships to students in Western Sicily. We have scholarships each from 1,300 euros to 2,700 euros. Then we have housing for students with 700 beds and we give them meals, more than 500,000 meals every year. So our organization for the right to study has a fundamental role to play in relation to university education. I think university, the time spent at university is the best period in a student's life. It's the moment when the community forms, the relations established in that period are relations that you will continue having in the rest of your life. In Caltanissetta, we also have a nice residence for students. Probably you know her, or you know this residence because it's a historical venue. It's among the most beautiful ones we have. And you know, beauty is important. If there is beauty, also the beauty of the mind is nurtured. I went to jail, I spent more than half an hour talking to a student. She told me about very important aspects in her life and she said, thanks to your organization, thanks to Ursu, I can study. My parents could not support my studies. I'm a teacher at the School of Agriculture, and I must, of course, refer to the huge agricultural assets in this area. I cooperated with ITS Sicani, a technical high school which focuses on the agri-food business. Almost two years ago, this school, the ITS, also following my suggestions, started thinking of training formats which didn't limit themselves to the various um, specialty sectors like uh, cereal growing, grain growing, durum wheat, uh, or cheese making. But we're also trying to train people in olive growing. 
and we're trying to combine three different branches, agriculture, agricultural tourism, and also gastronomy. In Palermo, there is a curriculum combining all these three aspects in order to train someone who's specialized in the promotion of the local area and cultural specificities of local areas in the inland of Sicily. We were successful right from the beginning. The hotels in the Agrigento, Trapani and Palermo areas are partners in this degree course. We have, or in this course at the ITS, we have 25 uh, students and approximately 30 requests for internships by the hotels. They specialize in the agri-food industry, but also in agriculture linked to tourism, to cultural heritage, etc. It is not a something that addresses mass tourism. Talking to the entrepreneurs, they told me that many tourists come back to Sicily a second or third time. They're no more interested in visiting the cathedral in Palermo or the Palatine Chapel. They want to have a travel experience. Thanks to the goodwill of many uh, professionals out there, activities uh, such as the local action groups uh, have uh, revitalized all this. Um, they have created interest in travel experiences, slow tourism, religious trails, and so on and so forth. And then another important point is the involvement of young people. As was reiterated by the councillor, we cannot do without young people. We have to use the language of young people. It would be advisable to involve them, involve the student associations, the universities, so that the young people talk to each other and speak the same language. I think it has to be a community of young people, students from the University of Catania, Palermo, Messina, Enna. The protagonists of the project are young people through different measures like startups. The municipality is also offering this uh, type of service. Uh, it's a sort of civil service. Uh, and please involve young people because they have, they always have surprises for us. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. We are about to have the last speaker, but before giving the floor to Mr. Silva, Professor, please stay with us um, a bit longer. We're talking about ecology of the language. We're talking about young people, about community and tourism. Let me now address Professor Privitera, but you too. I'm told I should turn this way, but the question is, having taught at Professor Grasso's master degree course in Messina in 2012, a master degree course on local tourism, 
Well, having been a teacher there, I thought, or maybe I heard from someone, use the word temporary citizen instead of tourist. In the example of the park, do you think we should stop speaking of tourism and rather talk about uh, travelers uh, traveling and temporary citizens? Or do you think we should use the word tourism and tourist? Because we're marketing a product, so we should call this as it should be called. I apologize, but I have to leave later. I would say yes, because it gives me the impression that someone is hosted, but hosted by whom? By young people who have to be trained. As you said, Professor, we have to address uh, uh, young people because it's to them that we will give the baton. So we can talk about guests from other places, other countries that are hosted by people who are specially trained in showing them what should be shown to them so that they maybe fall in love with this territory. When I was superintendent in Ragusa, I discovered that there were some Irish guys coming to harvest olives. Uh, they were, you know, climbing trees like uh, um, apes. We were there in an archaeology site and saw them. I asked, what are they doing? They said they harvest olives and then they um, take the olive back to um, Ireland. There were farmers who would rent trees, olive trees to them, specifically for this activity. The Eco Museum of the Normans, you know, you mapped the community first, right? And then the second activity was to group young people who um, created a group called angels for travelers, welcoming travelers. I'm sorry, I have to leave. I thank you very much. I'm always uh, ready to help if necessary. Thank you. Thank you so much for your enormous uh, contribution. Thank you. And now the last talk. I'm very pleased now to give the floor to Dr. Silva, Mr. Silva, who, you know, was involved in a study that I'm very much aware of. It's a study by our guru, our mentor. I also learned from Pepe de Santis, and I'm really very interested to know what you're going to tell us, Mr. Silva. I like your calm way of telling things. Uh, over to you. The floor is yours. First of all, I'd like to thank Federica. I was a user of your initiatives in the Citrus District, and uh, I know your brother, Nino Argentati, uh, we love the Pink Floyd, both of us, and we also love agriculture. It was uh, a course, just a few hours, on web marketing in the agri-food industry. It was um, a, a very uh, intense course, full of contents. You know, I'm a farmer, but I prefer saying I'm a peasant. I prefer, I produce organic oil. And this course helped me communicate through the internet, etc. I would keep 
such a format, uh, such a training format in the park. I will start from what you said, Federica, but first let me introduce myself because it helps me uh, tell you what I do. I'm from Lombardy. My name is Emanuele Silva. I studied um, agricultural sciences in Milan. I studied uh, functional uh, nutrition also. And then I moved to Sicily and I've lived here for seven years. Uh, you know, in Milan, the focus is on um, breeding, animal breeding. Alternatives were found to have the animals feel better without resorting to antibiotics. So we used uh, cocoa polyphenols. Uh, and then I became passionate for this. I started investigating. I also graduated in uh, nutritional sciences. Uh, I uh, did additional research into uh, functional food. After graduating, I found uh, only one possibility to work in large uh, companies, uh, cheese made uh, with the curd, with powdered milk, uh, not really the right food I was thinking about, um, even uh, a food that harms you, as was said these days. So seven years ago, in Sicily, the Grani Antichi Adventure was about to take off. I was in Santa Rita. We started using old um, grains for um, making bread. You know, cereals, grains are the same. A snack made by a multinational five years ago is the same as one made today. This is the quality of the industry because very often we have to study and understand what they're doing. The industry follows the Six Sigma industrial rules to provide you with the same product all the time. It's very different from the quality we would like to obtain. Healthy food, food which makes you feel better and good. Training is today's uh, topic. I've thought of three levels of awareness. The first one is a popular level. Through the Medea Study Center, we read the literature, we read a lot. You know, seeing Professor Butera was like seeing a rock star because he's a guru of an, of, among the environmental activists. He practices structural ecologism. You know, farming is responsible for one fourth of the world pollution, but this is an underestimate, I would assume. So the first level is popular culture. I was at a meeting in Catania and Professor Gallone was speaking there. He said that more than 70% of consumers eat food from outside, which doesn't have its origins in Sicily. We've been talking about nutritional aspects um, for five years, for five days, I'm sorry. You know, the low price oranges from Brazil have a considerable carbon footprint because they have traveled over long distances. I've lived here for a long time. I feel like a Sicilian. We buy food that travels over long distances. Let me give you some more examples because it's easier. 
tuna fish. Well, you may think it's um, healthy. Usually we see uh, Sicilian uh, brands, but you cannot fish tuna fish in the Mediterranean Sea, or rather the Japanese do because they have no rules. Instead, we have, you know, um, they w travel all the way through because uh, the tuna fish in our uh, sea is very good for sushi. Instead, we fish tuna fish from the ocean. We boil it and it loses its taste and nutritional properties. So we have a flat product. It's a sort of sponge. We put many flavors. And then in the supermarket, you there you have it in a jar, which has nothing natural in it. It's a jar or a can, which contains exactly the same tuna fish that you would find five years ago. We have to advertise the park outside to the people out there. You know, because of economic difficulties, people are forced to look for food at a low price. But it's not just an economic reason because, you know, we might implement farm to fork strategies here. I sell the oil to the north of Italy, because here it would be like, uh, you know, selling ice uh, to the, or in the North Pole. I would like to sell my oil for reasonable prices, because oil has to be affordable by all. Then I would like to mention one point. I was moved by Adriano Sella, a missionary to Brazil. In Brazil, and we read a book by Liberti, Mato Grosso is a forest that was completely taken down. It doesn't exist anymore. The surface is um, basically the surface area of Italy and France, and it's all planted with soybean. You know, the peoples were kindly asked to leave the area. I was moved by the missionary who said, stop giving charity to these people. They don't need it. You know, one farmer with a tractor can cover 500 hectares. With the satellite, they can be driven automatically. You don't have labor, but you have chemicals, rubbish. So, and then you have tumors develop among young people. So it's not a matter of donating one euro with your cell phone. Nobody knows what is behind our food. We have to be good and find tools to communicate this in the proper way. Then my second uh, training level is uh, children and young people in general. I was talking about this with Professor Butera. I told him your book should be translated for young children. It's written in a, in a way which is accessible to all, but maybe we should make it even more accessible so that it reaches young people and children. In children, there is no comfort zone. They are not used to consuming a lot and excessively. Habits may take you to losing interest in some issues. And it's very important to convey an ecology-based culture to young people. And the park has to do this, has got this task. The third level is the university. 
It was interesting to listen to the academic side, the director of the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences this morning made very interesting uh, comments. Uh, can't remember his name now, but the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences could be a sort of branch of the Palermo University, but instead, Professor Inglese was thinking of a um, school of nutritional sciences here in Caltanissetta focusing on food with a very holistic approach. But then he was discouraged. You know, I'm asking you from the university world to take action in this respect. Nicola Perullo, is he still here? I think he's happy if I quote him because he's a, a, a guest of ours. Pollenzo. Pollenzo is uh, in the middle of nowhere, 70 kilometers from Turin, I believe. Sorry, but I like quoting data from Alma Laurea sources of 2019. The share of um, foreign origin uh, graduates in Polenzo is over 14%, 48.5% of graduates come from outside the region. Only 45.6% among three-year courses, second level three-year courses, and 54 among the first level degree courses. I think they have used this um, experience-based approach. I believe we should adopt a model such as Petrini's. Of course, we have to follow the indications of the ministry. In Milan, the School of Agricultural Sciences wants the students to learn to produce commodities. In the School of Nutritional Sciences, my uh, schoolmates would not know anything about um, how to grow uh, grains uh, and uh, how to breed animals. Uh, well, this was in Milan, maybe the situation is a bit different here, but I like the idea of farmers, or pe of peasants being at the center of gravity in this ambitious project, the park. We said we don't want to be nostalgic, right? But farmers are still considered as backward. Instead, we should revise the role of farmers. Professor Inglese said, The problem is to be an entrepreneur. Instead, the farmer has a different model over a small surface, one hectare, uh, the farmers can grow an excellent product. Well, I appreciate you are an excellent student of peppers. Think of how many families could live in a dignified way, even on small farms. I think that a, new, a university like this with students coming uh, would be exciting. Caltanissetta is um, not very much inhabited. Uh, we could offer a lot uh, to students from abroad. Uh, we have funds uh, from the um, National Recovery and Resilience Plan. We have uh, a cooking school already. Why don't we establish uh, such a school at university? I know there are guidelines from the university, but um, maybe 
uh, we should consider this. Um, we have considered also the curricula in Polenzo. I think we should adapt that curriculum to our setting in uh, central Sicily and the south of Italy in general. Thank you very much for answering this point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, short answer to clarify. The director is uh, Professor Tiziano Caruso. Professor Inglese was the one who created uh, the degree course you are describing. He started uh, this uh, curriculum on uh, agribusiness. Uh, we've uh, got to the fourth academic year. We've completed the first three uh, courses, and now they have uh, a master course. Uh, he is the brilliant person uh, who is uh, to the young and they wanted this course to be in English. And then after the three-year course, uh, he said that we're going to have the master course in English. So this has a wide scope uh, curriculum and 50% of our students uh, who had been uh, uh, interested uh, I luckily could not uh, attend the lessons. His approach is something we can share. And then uh, we must be down to earth. Uh, unluckily, some of these things are not so unlikely. We live uh, uh, in a globalized world. Uh, you speak about commodities. Uh, we live in a world where hectare of uh, land, of farming land, uh, was not working uh, when land was given to farmers. Large farming areas uh, were cut into plots of four hectares. And the result was that all our migrants could, I mean, could not live on four hectares of farming land. Unluckily, the experience of the past is something to bear in mind. From an ideological viewpoint, we can live in a country as it is shown on TV, but farming is something serious. And uh, our agriculture does not produce junk food. Our agriculture is supervised and subject to control systems. And I'm not speaking about organic farming. We've got a specific uh, course in organic farming. Uh, we have an interest for agriculture with a different philosophy, a different approach. The traditional farming uh, provides food for a lot of people, even though 15% of uh, farming land is dedicated to organic farming. Uh, well, uh, we should not forget that we can do this because uh, our country is a rich country. Otherwise, uh, conventional farming would be needed. The resilience and recovery plan is going to push us to revise our policies. Uh, over the past year, I've been working on this. I thank you, however, for giving me the floor, and I would have to speak for about one hour to expand on this. We are getting to the 
end of these five days, five days dedicated to research, community, in-depth analysis, and I think it is uh, legitimate and uh, a pleasure to give the floor as uh, uh, the act before last to the person who really wanted this process uh, together with the councillor Nicoletti, who is a, a member of the administration. Pepe de Santis, uh, who as a warrior, keeps on thinking about utopia. Pepe, five minutes. Please try to be short. Uh, we've certainly made a step forward in dreaming the park, uh, the strategy of the park, the project of the park, the driving uh, and uh, starting of basic energies. Five days, 10 sessions uh, with uh, more than uh, 100 interventions. Uh, which are free interventions, free speeches, uh, with uh, motivations which are not uh, compulsory or presentations. I've counted all the speakers, uh, about 50 people physically attending uh, after two years of wearing masks, God only knows how we're going to move on. If you take the book of Galina on wild uh, industrialization, you see where we are slowing down there. Then a decade of dramas after 2007, I remember speculators gave up the real estate area and moved on the into the food sectors the situation has not improved these are data and studies we're all clever to understand currently of course, in Caltanissetta with the beautiful people, we use the, this uh, physical organization. We got uh, recorded material we can watch again. And uh, this is a uh, big step forward each of us is going to follow one's own pathway but then uh, there can also be a failure on a humble line the vision uh, ideation uh, strategy you stay from the designing viewpoint we are going to move uh, towards a more concrete, practical uh, stage. 
we're going to give a first organization and set up at least a legal profile to this system. It's not forbidden to dream, but we should see what is a dream and what is the nightmare. So, the Parliament of Good Wills is here. We combined all energies, institutional, academic world, public administrations, uh, heroines, uh, as you and you. And it's a great pleasure to see you speak. After that, we can uh, arrange some of the main items and projects. Uh, then there will be submitted to the parliament. I'm not unexperienced. I've been, uh, I've managed things uh, such as Palazzo d'Orléan, and I worked uh, there, which is the seat of the president of the Sicilian region. Maybe a form where we are going to uh, put in the network uh, this slow walking uh, from donkeys to bicycles and with mass presence and participation. We can maybe have this form, it costs this and that. This is the list of costs. It's very easy. And it's something uh, which uh, has been done in many other occasions. <coughs> Writing the Divine Comedy is something that only Dante Alighieri could do. We got local landscapes. One hundred and twenty local villages. So this is the reason why the park is being uh, created. Uh, drones can be used to shoot videos. We have a quote, it's not very expensive. The rich Japanese uh, experts can do that, but we can use drones. I'm speaking about all the practical things and the transformation of material I was a bit moved when I heard the data something nice I heard was that some people spoke about things I hadn't heard for years We are relaxed and we want to perform effectively in each country. Doing something which is the Mediterranean lifestyle, and then thinking about 
Marco King, we can all start eating. For instance, I could say tonight I'm only going to have 3,000 cannoli. He's going to die, but he's going to be happy after he dies. So without uh, making uh, a terror of the preaching and teaching our children, our children uh, without terror, letting them free to eat and do what they want in line with this lifestyle. Well, we've been thinking extensively about good things, bad things through the years. So a long job. For 30 years, uh, attempts to sustainable developments have been made. After that, while some who are resisting issues were coming up so you need to make up new schemes schemes that may fail but it doesn't matter we've got dozens of scientists who think that if this economy keeps going towards this direction, we may even disappear from the earth. Mankind is not willing to see the catastrophic risks. I'm a moderate person. I'm very practical and down to earth under many profiles. When Berlusconi trains were under crisis, I invented MPA, so intense and humble life. As the heroism of from each of you. So we work on schemes. We'll be with the third government after two and a half years. And I avoid being critical. We've got also those focusing on development for the Molise region. We're going to ask for quite consistent funds. Luckily, I'm an expert of these uh, funds for cohesion and development. We haven't spent even 10% for some funds. There's something which is going wrong. So we get the money and uh, we want to use the money we get. When uh, we launched uh, the Territorial Integrated Project. It was 2003 and uh, we were getting close to the economic crisis. Three billion euros uh, certified make up all the municipalities together. Some people benefited from them. 
So these are the steps from the organization of viewpoint. We need to create new things and we should think about the creation of this peculiar community. We've got the best colleagues. We've got experts with foundations. We asked Borgo Mayo, who without state made a sort of miracle. In my opinion, it's not perfectly fair because I think we should all work together and not on a parallel system. We got an archaeologist from Rome. We spent nights talking with one another. The operational tools can be easily found with the idea that we've pulled the best project managers, both at public and private level. So absolute autonomy from everyone. We are also at the service of sick institutions where they need to improve. We do not want the alternative region, the alternative state. Then in some years, we will draw the conclusions on that. Then for the rest, our debate is an overall general debate. We listen to each other. We may have opposing thesis and positions for a mutual conversion. We are moving from a para-revolutionary waves to dictatorship waves from the Roman Republic. Octaviano Augustus, uh, who had uh, combined some regions. So even the reconstruction of democracy of municipalities, a different reconstruction of uh, maps uh, with different provinces. So a single institution because we make up a balance with the metropolitan cities. We don't need a scientist to understand these idiot things. So, Then we intertwine this huge path, high political pathway. We intertwine it with the national and international pathway drawn by my friend Amato, who is the speaker tonight. So as for the opposing thesis, the debate must go on. So we stop with the promise of meeting again soon. Before giving the floor for a couple of seconds, this is useful if a new generation is involved. We still have a lot of children here who are ready. 
and the most useful suggestion comes from him. We need to help all children one by one without involving them. And we know that the new generation must be involved. Even the fascists coming from the war made a revolution by being united. Now to pay tribute to workers, please stay here five more minutes. Concetta Cataldo, the one, uh, the person in charge for UNESCO policies of the project. Concetta, you're kindly asked to come to the stage. Carmelo Donato. And Carmelo Donato and uh, other interpreters uh, on the stage for a photograph. Now we're looking for a photographer. 